Alright, let's go to game number three. I am unstable, joined here by Railcoon between Troya and SC. Both of them taking decisive victories early in their first couple of games. Let's see if this third one will live up to the expectation that we've come to see from both these players. Of course, Troya is down here at the bottom right as our blue Protoss. And then, of course, SC over here at the top left as our red Terran. Now, both these guys, as we said, each game uh, still good friends, former teammates, former coach and player, and I think Choya really did one over on SC with that very, very crisp timing build that we saw can last just, game. Can I just refer to him as the mad scientist for, for the rest <laughs> of the series? If you want uh, to. I mean, if you that, want that to. was really well done. It was one of those things where there's no reason for you to ever expect something like that. Those are the all-ins that I really, really like. Because you stop and you think about that and you're like, how do you even stop that? And the answer of how you have to stop that, you have to know it's coming. Yeah. And it's one of those really bizarre things that you'd never expect that people will very rarely be expecting it. It's You can't throw it out too often, but when you do like that, oh my god, the results. <laughs> uh, I remember we saw, I think it was one of the... SPR guys did that crazy multiple immortal all in versus Terrans in one of our Malaysian events. I had the same kind of reaction of, how do you even stop that? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we do see the gas down for SC, of course, so we're not going to be seeing any kind of expansion. Look at this, he's actually going to have a proxy barracks behind his mineral line. Interesting. Mock mm. People are Makarexing again recently. I don't know what, what caused it. Like, it was a strategy that got played out for a while, and then, like, nobody did it. Yeah. And all of a sudden, like, in the last week, everybody's Makarak saying <laughs> It's like the Korean Terrans, they had a conference, and they're like, okay. We're bringing it back. The, well, you know, TVP's been pretty crazy recently. We needed a new weapon. And then Maka's like, I got it. And everybody looks at him like, you're brilliant. <laughs> um, We're just all so slow. Uh, okay, so we do have a reactor on that barracks down here. Choya is actually going for the second gateway in his main before expanding. Probably just going to play very, very safe against SC in this one. His probe has come back in, sees that we do have the reactor. Hasn't spotted this extra barracks just yet, which is going into a tech lab, so we'll probably see uh, Kankaski shells then straight into Stim, uh, given the he fact that he needs to take out this probe soon, though. Yeah, there we go. It does go down. Because seeing the reactor into a um, expansion isn't always that strange. Yeah. But he did see that he didn't come off of gas, and if that probe had stayed alive and not seen a command center, then he would have gotten really suspicious. But mm -hmm. I think just because of the fact that he got down here and saw that the reactor was finishing and he's still mining gas, that's kind of odd. So Choi is going to be a little bit suspicious. We'll see how he reacts. He is getting his expansion out at the normal time, and he's sitting on two gateways, but... Uh, I wouldn't expect him to do anything too risky right now, because he's got that in the back of his mind of, are you going to do something crazy to me right now? Mm -hmm. Are you getting revenge for that last game? Quite possibly. We do... Like, he hasn't gone anywhere past these two barracks, so he'll probably wait for a decent amount of forces and then move out. He, of course, does know that there is these two gateways, so he's probably going to wait a little bit longer than normal when he pushes out with this just to get that extra bulk into his army. But he definitely doesn't want to expand at any point. <laughs> That's, what, that's the feeling I'm getting from SC right now. Wants to try and punish Choya because he has been playing extremely macro-oriented lately. Like, he tried it in game one. He tried it here just with a little bit, being, playing a little bit more safe with that second gateway. And game two was just a little bit of a revenge thing, so... <laughs> that second gateway could help a lot, though. Like, it it's a little thing, but that extra gateway a little bit sooner, he's going to have a few more units. SC has not made a third barracks yet, so he's sitting just on the two racks. The two racks is good, don't get me wrong. It It's wonderful, it's very powerful, I'm not trying to down talk it, but he's not going for the three racks, which, I mean, if he was going to go full in, completely all in, one base, uh, a lot of times you would see that third racks. He's going to drop a factory instead, but... Well, Choi has already gone up to three gateways uh, after that nexus anyway, so he's going to have quite a few units uh, coming in. 26 to 20 army supply. We, of course, do not have stim at all, and that is going to make this force field coming out from this entry very, very dangerous for SC. And the longer yeah. this goes on before he puts any punishment on the Choya, the worse that it is for him. Uh, looking here at the worker supply, 32 for Choya, 23 for SC. So, yeah, SC really needs to kill a lot of probes 
or all this nexus. Army supply is still in favor of SC, but it's getting closer and closer by the minute. Needs and to we get do away see from SC this poking up. Fields. Nice guardian shield, actually. Not using any force fields, just using the guardian shield to protect these zealots. You can see zealots are barely inside the guardian shield that entire time. They took yeah. a ton of extra damage. And now, look at that! That was actually really well done by Choya with that micro, with keeping the zealots just barely under the guardian shield. The bio couldn't move forward to focus it down because it was just barely on the edges there, and he completely stopped that in his tracks. Yeah, I was, I was actually when he was on the top of this ramp after the guardian shield, I thought he was going to put one force field just behind the army, trapping it between the force field and the zealots. But I think Choya just didn't think he had enough energy for it. Uh, worked out well regardless, going straight into a Twilight Council now. Could possibly go into DTs after this, because he realized something's up here at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Could go into Blink, uh, and then into DTs. Either way, he is ahead now, uh, quite severely. Looking at this, 41 to 28 for the workers, even on army supply. And uh, SC going straight for that starport. He's got a reactor over here as well. Yeah, he's... The one thing that could bring this back into the game for SC, which is kind of this statement is kind of always true for Terran is drops. <laughs> you know, he's gonna have medevacs on the field here in a second, and Choya is was starting to poke around the map with his stalkers. So uh, that's gonna be the one thing here is you know gotta make sure he doesn't get caught off guard by a drop. But that's kind of just playing against Terran. You always have to have that in the back of your mind. So. He's going to be thinking about that, but we'll see what happens. As he's positioning like he's going to expand, he's got his army over here, and he's just like still not doing it. It's like, nope. Hey, I'm on there's one the DT base. shrine. Where okay. is it? Okay. There it is. And. Charlie's looking for it. SC coming out again. His stim is going to be finished this time, but he's going to have, like, he's already prepared for a drop to come in in the main there's here. Two there's medivacs. two medivacs on the way as well, exactly. And he's going to have enough force fields to block this off. So yeah. he needs to pay attention. He's got those stalkers. Oh no, the Choya, they're coming back from the main. He's of course seen this coming. He sees the two medivacs as well. He can't kill that, <laughs> that, that marine that buddy, sorry. <laughs> he wasted a little bit of a, a medivac energy, but that's about it. Oh no, Choya actually pulled the stalkers away from the main base that were protecting against drops because he's worried about an attack in the front. That is a pretty considerable army, and there's a lot of SCVs with this. Mm -hmm. This is the last one. has effort. a lot of units. He is behind in the army supply once again, though. And SC is charging forward, taking down these pylons, and will unpower two of these gates. Oh, no, no, it won't. There's another, another pylon there. Right there. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, I thought that was out of range, but I'm, I'm just a big fat liar. I'm sorry. But Look at this Choya waiting. The gateways. Choya is waiting for his DT shrine to finish and being very, very patient. Of course, looking back over here for SC, he doesn't have a scan at all. He just needs one DT and he will force this completely back. He, there's the DT coming in now. He's going to actually be able to do a lot of damage with this. More DTs coming in. Yeah, two Dark Templars are on the field. He does have these sentries here. He could cut him in half. Oh, he did not go for it. Is that he's going to try and trap him so he can't get at this Nexus. SC is in a really bad position to be fighting Choya here. Yeah, look at that. that Choya very, very patient and picked that engagement perfectly. He's, he did lo uh, didn't lose his Nexus. He's unpowered. The DT Shrine doesn't really make a difference, though. Yeah, it still works. He killed two gateways. That's about the only thing that went positive for SC right there. Yeah. Um, everything else didn't really go his way. Now he's making a Raven. But that, that's two failed attacks. He's still on one base. Choi has two. This is looking really bad. 19 Half the supply of the workers. And I think it's just going to come down to Choi moving across. Uh, he's probably going to send his DTs over there first. Because keep in mind, he still hasn't seen the fact that there's no expansion here. He doesn't know that's coming. And we do have a three oh, minute back drop. Oh my god. Remember what I was saying earlier about the one thing that can pull a Terran player back <laughs> into the game? Oh my god. That is a huge drop in Choi. He was out of position. That's a lot of units being thrown in here. He's moving down. He's going to try and snipe this forge, it looks like. But the units from Choya are already here. Yeah, there's way Let's too much stuff for Choya. Targeting down the medivacs. The DTs are just pretty much one-shotting the Marines because they already used Stim. They also have that plus one, up, uh, sorry, plus one armor upgrade. And uh, this looks like good night for SC right here. Yeah, he killed some workers, but that was not enough. He got the forge. At the same time, a DT was in the main over here for SC, but the Raven was able to clean it up. <coughs> As he, yet again, still, he wants to he's win. He's still not expanding. He's going to use the classic strategy of I'm going to mine out my main, then lift my orbital over to my natural and still be on one base. 
But he's still getting further and further behind the longer this goes on. He's now yeah. 49 S, uh, sorry, 49 probes to 22 SCVs. There's a lot of stalkers in here now. They are. He did take out the forge. There's not going to be extra upgrades, but Zealot Speed is going to be finished soon as well. Uh, the big thing for SC here at the moment is he's going to be able to see these DTs coming forward, so they won't be able to do as much damage. But the amount of stalkers that are there, he can easily. Just target he doesn't down have enough for a point defense drone just yet, and he's no. moving forward. He really needs to wait for that point defense drone energy. He's like five away. SC. Oh my god. He's like, even Archon he here. Here, got sniped, would have been really dangerous. He will have enough energy now. That was oh, he's actually going to go for turrets instead. Auto Whoa, why did he. Wow, there's so many stalkers here. He made an auto turret instead of point defense drone. I have no idea why he did that. Archon dies. Guardian shields going up. SC. He needed the point defense drone if he even wanted to stand a chance against that army. I have absolutely no idea why he did that. <laughs> yeah, this looks like it for SC. 25 supply to 61. He hasn't expanded. He's still dropping mules at his main. He can still try and do it. But Choi has defended far too well this entire time. He did lose a lot of probes there. 31. He lost a good 20 probes. But it doesn't really matter because he was that far ahead in the economy oh, anyway. SC didn't do enough damage to actually even it up. The Raven's still alive though. But Choi are moving forward. Just straight on top of that. The Raven's dead. There's the GG. Choya will take this one down. Wow. And that is not what any of us were expecting, really. SC falling to his former coach, FXO's Choya. Choya will move on to the next round, and we will move on to the next match. Stay with us. And welcome back everyone. First game between FXO's Gumio and OGS the STC up next. It is going to be a TVT starting on Daybreak. And we do realize we have a lot of Terrans in our tournament, but it's okay. We cheated a little bit and made them all play each other in the first round so they knock each other out. No, of course we didn't do that. But <laughs> that's just how the seedings work out. Don't say that. Out. People won't believe you. <laughs> but we do have, of course, the STC down here in the bottom left as our blue Terran. Uh, a very consistent player in, our, in the FX Open events. But then, of course, we have Gumio up here at the top right. Always worried about if people are hungry or not. Because last time I was in Korea, every two hours, he, I think he didn't notice me eating or something. But every two hours, he's like, you hungry? You hungry? I'm like, I just ate. Ah. <laughs> Maybe he's hungry, but he doesn't want to go eat alone. So he's always walking around and asking people if they're hungry. <laughs> nah. And everybody's like, no, we just ate. And then he walks back to his computer and he's sad because nobody <laughs> wants to go eat with him. Mm. Very uh, strong player. Did, of course, just qualify for the round of 16 of the first... Tower <laughs> Yes, the Tower Terran himself well, did advance. Very close series. Uh, extremely good games. Uh, well, it was a bit, a bit sloppy near the end. I'll, I'll be hypercritical about that. But still, good that he got through. 
and uh, we'll see how he wants to come up against the STC. Now, so far we've had one TVT the, in the entire series today, and that was Pulp versus Finn. Game one of Pulp versus Finn was great. Bio versus Mech, uh, it really worked out well. I'm not going to spoil the result for those of you who are just tuned in, but you can go and check the replays. Of, uh, sorry, not the replays, the rebroadcast later on, or the th Team Liquid thread. <coughs> And let's see if we see something similar this time here, Relkin. What do you think? Um, well, they both went for their barracks, so we don't see any command center first. But neither of them made gas. So, looks like we're going to see a double gasless expansion from these two players. Then when that happens on a map like Daybreak, we're going to have a bit of a longer game. Mm -hmm. And it's really just going to come down to what they transition out of this. Um, we've been seeing a lot more bio recently, so I'm curious to see if either player is actually going to go for that. Yeah. Well, we do see, of course, the uh, command center down in the natural for the STC. Now, back when he was in the army a long time ago, when the FX Open series just first started, he did not do anything other than this build, regardless of any matchup. <laughs> this build over and over and over again, and me and Wolf used to laugh and say, he doesn't know anything else, it's okay, because he keeps winning with it. But <laughs> it's still uh, becoming a very, very staple just, uh, build. Just reminds me of one of the classic strategies for American football that a lot of I know it's not a very popular sport worldwide, but there's generally a, a thing where if you're running a play and your opponent can't figure out how to stop it, you just keep running that play over and over again until they figure out how to stop it, because why not? Why do you show more than you need to if it's working? Yeah, exactly. I can't remember who was speaking. Something along those lines came up in a conversation I had or listened to recently where it was, if you someone is having a hard time figuring out your build, just keep doing it over and over and over and over again and then once they figure it out and finally beat you you swap to your build number two and in a best of five when they take some three games to beat the same strategy do you know how defeated they feel when something <laughs> new comes out it's like oh They're like yeah i finally figured it out wait he's doing something different ah! <laughs> <clears throat> but we see that gumiho has actually gone up to three barracks while yep. stc is sitting on just the one factory on the way, finishing up a reactor here at the same time. So we might be seeing him start off with some of these Hellions. Mm -hmm. And there's a little bit of a Marine fight going on down here. And Gumiho's Marine is dancing all over the place, being annoying for Oh, STC. he lost the first shot. Yeah. I think he did cost that mule one trip, though, by shooting it. He had to pull off the minerals a little bit longer than what he probably would have liked to. Yeah. So... It'll be close, but you might have possibly cost him 30 minerals there. Yeah! <laughs> Everything matters. We do see more Marines coming out here now, though. You, of course, will have the more uh, larger army. And we have a starport coming in for the STC. So, Gumio, of course, during before, as you were speaking, I, I pointed out this engineering bay getting plus one as well now. He's going to be very safe against anything that really comes through here with those with those Marines. The downside, nice scan by the, uh, the STC, catches everything. But the downside of that is he's not going to have the tech that he really wants to have. There's the factory for him just now, getting combat Oh, wow. Well. Hmm? Gumiho dropped that factory right before the scan ended. I mean, if you waited five more seconds, he wouldn't have seen that. And now the next time SCC goes over to check that base, we'll see a factory on the way, and he'll be like, ah, uh, why did you do that? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it, it seems silly when you do that, when the scan is just about to finish and you drop a building in front of them. You know, you can't guarantee that they'll see it, but it's... It's a risk, and you can see that SCC is still swapping around his add-ons here quite a bit. Well, the other thing you can think of in that situation is, uh, I'll come back to that as the aliens come up the ramp. Actually, uh, two of them lined up here, and well, a bit of a mis miscontrol there by SCC, losing one of his aliens. He is going to have to back up eventually, though, the more Marines come through. Uh, as I was saying, the thing you can think about in that situation is, Gumio is giving the STC the respect that he has rightfully earned in the Korean scene, that he's no, he knows he's going to get a factory in a second anyway. He might as well not waste time and just get That's it down. True. So, but you can see that SC is, STC is working on Cloak. It's about halfway done. Mm -hmm. He has Infernal Pre-Igniter nearing that halfway mark as well. So he's going to be going for the classic, most annoying strategy, <laughs> the Blue Flame Hellions and Banshees, one after another. And it's just like, ah. Uh, it's so annoying to deal with those two right after each other. And we'll see what Gumiho can do. He's been doing a good job of defending against these Hellions so far, just blocking up these ramps with the Marines. He's got enough Marines who's able to take the damage, just soak a few Hellion shots, lose some Marines, and just keep him out. This Banshee so was we'll shut see. down quite nicely too with the turret placement over here by Gumiho. And of course, Gumiho does love Banshees himself uh, in the games versus MMA. Banshees getting like 30-something plus kills in oh that game God. on Crossfire. Uh, that was Those very entertaining. for 
longer than they really should have because he was getting so many kills with those. But they are. But look at this. Yeah. Trying to chase down this Banshee, getting his Marines under it to try and scare it away. Um, does he even have enough energy for a scan? No, he was actually just trying to scare the Banshee away. Uh, but he will have some now. He doesn't have Stim, remember, so he can't really chase it down. Yeah, he's trying to get his Marines into a good position to throw that scan down, but he hasn't quite been able to do it. He's only got the one scan right now, so if he does throw it down, he doesn't want to waste it. Nice job picking up the Marauder there with the Medivac to save it from that Banshee shot. Which would have taken it out. Oh, Banshee taking a lot of hits from that turret. Goes down to 44 HP. Nice turret placement by Gumio here. Doesn't cost much. He used the en engineering bay to get his upgrades up started shortly. He's actually got throwing down a second one and an armory. And uh, the turret placement here has been phenomenal. It's really saved Gumio's SCV line. Yeah, it's always a little bit more risky to place your turrets like that. But if you do it correctly, it pays off really nicely because it just keeps him from getting inside your base. Mm -hmm. um, as opposed to defending your mineral line and then let, letting him take out all of your add-ons and harass your workers building buildings, etc. But if you don't get those placed right, then he'll manage to sneak in and then you've got no protection. He's just wreaking havoc everywhere. But he did it very nicely. You can see he's got two Vikings out, but it looks like he's still going for bio, just getting these Vikings just to protect against Banshees while the bio is roaming through the map. And we've been seeing more of this, the bio versus tank interaction. And surprisingly enough, we've been seeing the bio winning more often than not recently as players have been really figuring out how to do this matchup in Terran versus Terran. Yeah, well, we do, of course, see Stim is now done here for Gumio. We got a lot of tanks coming out for the STC. And uh, Daybreak is a map where you can use Bio quite effectively due to the multiple choke points uh, and the multiple avenues that you can come around and flank from, as we did see in Polt versus Finn. Yeah, and that's really the key for doing the Bio, is you have to stay mobile, you have to keep the, the tank line unseaging and moving around, and try and catch him out of position while, by, while you make him have to keep repositioning constantly. That's what um, happened to Finn, is he got caught completely off guard with his tanks and siege in the middle well, of nowhere. Well, another thing that happened in that game too is uh, Pult was actually uh, quite far ahead on upgrades. Oh, the, exact the barracks is going to die again. That happened to Finn as well. He <laughs> lost his barracks and then wasn't actually able to produce any more factories. So you can see SDC is in the exact same position where he has to rebuild his barracks right at the moment where he's probably going to drop some extra factories. That's actually having really deja vu here, Railcoon, because of the the barracks, the upgrades of of Gumio. He's actually going to have vehicle weapons plus one, but he's losing quite a few units here to those blue flames. He is down ten supply. He's going to have to be careful. I think he intended to upgrade the ship weapons for his Vikings because he's not actually making anything from his factories. Mm. Um, yeah, that could have been a misclick from Gumio, but. It's going to be alright, because if they go into a super late game and he starts making some tanks, then it'll be beneficial anyways. Yeah. Okay, so the STC is looking very dangerous here at the moment. He's got Vikings, Banshees, a Raven in there as well to help deal with the Marauders. Gumio can't really engage at this point. He's going to have to get out of there. But look at this. He does have more forces down the bottom. Yeah, SCC is being very intelligent. He knows that at this point in the game, that's not his entire army. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't want to push too far forward without sieging, uh, just in case Gumiho is swinging around behind him for a flanking maneuver. And with that many Marauders, if he had been, that could have been really painful. So he's being very careful. He's trying to get, set himself up in a good position, which is very, very smart with this kind of an interaction with the bio versus pure mech. Whichever person catches their opponent in a better position is really just going to decimate the other army. So you can see that SCC is being very careful because he needs to be in this situation. And well, Gumio got his third up quite a while ago, and it's starting to kick into gear now. That third orbital is going to help out immensely. But we actually see a fourth command center being built uh -oh. by the STC. And oh, look at this! Uh, he was swinging around the side, and STC is not aware of it. Oh my God! This 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 could be this could be very Gumiho. hard. Oh, oh my, my God. God! Half the tanks are on siege. PDD does tanks. its best. But goodbye tanks, so many marauders, the Hellions only could cover one side. There's cloak on those banshees, they are going to help out quite nicely, but that force for the STC was just crushed, Railcoon. There's the scan to take out the banshees as well. There aren't that many marines, so you might actually live with this, but still. <laughs> yeah, but now the Vikings have come to join the party, so he might be able to take that out with the Vikings. A few more marines coming in as well. And yeah, that was exactly what we were talking about there. SCC got completely off guard. He got flanked by a huge Marauder force. His tanks were out of position. He was able to hit them directly with nothing in between. Mm -hmm. 
the Hellions weren't there to buffer them. So SCC's army just got completely crushed, and now he's way far behind in supply. He only has a couple tanks, a smattering of Hellions, and he's got a lot of Vikings. But the problem is, if you land the Vikings against Marauders, they just die. Another engagement here, but there's a lot of the pure Viking force is really going to hurt. Gumio, because you can't really use that sim. 3-3 three, three already on the way for Gumio compared to the 0-0 zero, zero for the STC. And we saw this in the Pult V Fin game. I said it earlier. I'm going to say it again. That really did help out. We also see double expanding coming out here from Gumio feeling very safe at the moment because it takes a very long time to rebuild that mech army. Yeah. It's really, really important in when you're playing this mech style that you can't lose that many tanks. It's one of the main ways you try and fight the mech army when your bio is you try and whittle down the tank number because it keeps them from being able to push. See, the SCC has been forced back into a really defensive position, and now the very mobile army of Gumiho has complete control over the map to be able to swing around and harass any one of these expansions that he wants to. So the game is definitely in Gumiho's hands right now. And we'll see what he does with it. You can see him catching some Hellions here, swinging over towards the third base. The SCC has to try and come defend this, but he can't move all of his tanks. So he's trying to make a difficult decision. Expansion comes down, and now it looks like he's going to lose those tanks anyways. Oh. oh. That's looking really, really bad for SCC right now. Because yeah, now he can go off and hit the fourth base as well. That orbital actually dropped so quick that the SCC didn't even get a chance to lift it up. And uh, just... The supply difference here is going to make a massive oh, difference Oh, tanks as well. miss Rowley by STC, giving him two more free tanks over here at the third base. STC, you need to get a control of that. Like, that's the last thing he needs right now is to lose more tanks. Well, it's pretty much he over at this point here, Raccoon, that regardless. 3-3 three, three upgrade is going to be finished shortly, only just now, plus one being researched for the STC. And we're going to have another flank here into the extra base, coming straight in from both sides. No, he's actually going at two different angles here. Not where Mech really wants to play to fight from. He wants to fight in one big ball. The Vikings doing great job for the SDC taking out the Medivacs, but he just can't deal with the forces on the ground. And both these extra expansions have been lifted up. Command Center goes down. He's finished up all yeah. the. Uh, Look, Gumi was like fifth base in the center of the map, just calling down massive amounts of mules there. He's got a fourth down in the bottom right as well. So he's on five base now against basically two, because the main is about to mine out, and his natural is pretty much gone so mm -hmm. by the time he finally gets his third base set up again he's gonna be really on no economy at all he's 50 supply behind i'm surprised it's not more right now mm -hmm. with how much gumiho has been just really manhandling him well it's actually the viking count that's uh that makes it look that that's oh that's huge. true and uh, we do have gumiho coming in yet again getting a more hellions he looks like he's actually gonna lose these these bio forces here but it doesn't really make that much of a difference <laughs> at the moment still 60 nope. supply up and that's the thing is these Vikings really aren't doing much. He's taking out the, the medevacs, but that's really all about he can do. Because mm -hmm. against 3-3 Marauders, if those even touch the ground, they're just going to die in about 5 seconds flat. It's not even going to be 10 seconds. Like It's just going to be disgusting how quickly those will melt. So Gumiho still has complete control of this game. You can see he's just moving his army around, making sure that STC can't really expand. And we should be seeing a GG soon. But it it's going like to come down to this last engagement. If, if Gumio yeah. uh, chokes pretty hard and, and gets caught in a bad spot, the, the tank dumpers here can, are still more than enough to, cr to crush his army. But that being said, he is three bases. Uh, sorry, he is on five bases compared to the three at the moment for the STC because he's had to bring his command center down. Yeah, the problem is STC only has three Hellions. He doesn't have anything to stand in front of these tanks right now. So yeah, he's got a lot of tanks, but the Marauders are going to get on them immediately. The only real option would be those Vikings, so he might actually want to consider landing the, the Vikings once his fight starts, just to give his tanks a few more shots. So I think that would be his only real option to actually try and win a fight against Gumiho right now. Yeah, exactly. But he's on siege at the moment, and here comes Gumiho. He's actually going to get right up close before the tanks finish sieging up, and that is not good at all. Look at that, Gumiho splitting up some forces to the right, targeting down tanks one at a time. And on the other hand, he's yeah, gonna he left some to help deal with the Hellions. Yeah. Vikings did come down to join the battle, but it was after most of the tanks were down, so it really didn't make a difference, and there's the GG. Yeah, very nicely done by Gumio. He did take out the STC in game number one, but it is a best of three, of course. The STC more than capable of bringing it back. And yet again, Railkin, we've seen Bio take out Mech, and it's, it's quite interesting because both of those decisive engagements were the ones where they were down near the bottom right, 
and Gumio got a complete surround and it really just snowballed from there. The upgrades as well for Gumio were miles ahead of the STC and it just really shows how dominant that Bio can be against something like Mech. But that being said, you can nit nitpick the STC's play there quite a bit as well. But we're going to go into game number two before we get too far into that, shall we? Sounds good. Hello, my name is Pyong <laughs> Zeko. I'm Tower Terra. You watching FX of TV. And here we go, game number two, Gumio versus the STC for the FX Open Invitational Series. $5,000 in prizes up for grabs, and of course, we are giving away quite a few prizes to the lucky subscribers that take up our offer of the subscribing. To our event, $5 for the entire series, month-long series, will enable you to chat in the chat there during peak times. Also, be in the chance to win some signed FX Open player memorabilia. Chance to go in the draw to receive <laughs> some special uh, your choice of replays from FXO players. Do you want ZVT replays from Lino? Sub up and you will be in the chance to win those. Oh, it's many, many more. But we are going to go straight into a gas burst from the STC over here on the left hand side as our blue Terran. And then, of course, over here on the right is going to be FXO's Gumio as our red. So. Last game, Railcoon. We had oh, some... Oh! Gumiho, why did you? You just killed the Scantipede violently. That's no, right, I got that on camera. So, it's okay. We have He's evidence, like, and we can punish him later. He just, like, went over and just, like, drilled it with his SCV. <laughs> Even, like, delayed his barracks for, like, a second to do it. Like, so mean. <laughs> it, it, maybe it creeps him out, man. <laughs> maybe he's afraid of bugs. I don't know, mm. but... Looking at STC and the fact that we're talking earlier that he does have a propensity for mech, and he did go for this refinery first, mm. I'm thinking that we might be seeing that uh, really quick blue flame Hellion into mech build from him. This is a relatively small map, but the only issue is going to be if he does go full out mech again. Trying to get through the center with his huge tank army will be the main problematic area. as yeah. That'll be the best place that Gumio is going to have to try and flank around him. Yeah, I'm surprised that the STC would have picked this map if he does want to go for uh, mech again. Uh, that being said, the STC is quite a lot of different strategies under his belt. And uh, TVT, one of his stronger matchups, I believe. So, 
We'll see. We do have the factory down, of course. No second geyser just yet. Yeah, it's interesting how last game both players went straight to their expansion and then deviated after that. And this time they're both staying on one base, getting that refinery up. Mm. Waiting to see if Gumiho is going to drop a factory or not. It does have the resources, but is holding off. It looks like he might just be going for a one rack expansion or something. Yeah, he does have a reactor down, so he might just be heading into the one rack expansion, getting that gas started a little bit early, so that once he gets those extra barracks up, he can start into those uh, upgrades very, very quickly. Absolutely true. So, we do have that factory moved over onto the tech lab, so we're most likely going to see some blue flame hellions. There we go. As I say it, he clicks that upgrade, and this is going to be very, very fast blue flames here, Railcoon. Like, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised to see if we see a starport go down to do a blue flame drop. Oh, oh my god! Go sneaks right in past the marine, so he's going to get some good scouting information. He sees the factory on the tech lab that early with the tech lab researching. There's really only going to be one option for that. It's going to be the blue flame hellions and the, the hellion pops out to help that as well. Yeah. So you see that Gumio has actually thrown down a factory afterwards. Looks like he's going to float that over onto the reactor and make some hellions of his own, which is interesting, seeing as he uh, did get a scout on what's going on, but he has that command center on the oh, way. He's three. Oh my god, he's actually lining up his marines. They took a lot of damage from that hellion there. Did not need to have that happen. But it looks like he's going to start getting his own hellions out with the factory moving across. Te Tech Lab on the barracks. Both these guys have their expansions coming. Gumio slightly further ahead, though. Yeah. He did get his down sooner because of the fact that uh, STC to go straight for that blue flame research and now has the starport following it up. So we'll see if he does actually move into Banshees again. Blue flame, Banshees, so annoying to deal with those both at the same time. But Gumiho did such a good job last game do dealing with it. It looks like STC is actually starting off with the Vikings. He's playing a little bit more defensive. Wants to make sure he doesn't get hit by an early Banshee from Gumiho. Well, Gumio is going to try and float his command center down to the bottom here. Uh, not going to work out that well, though, because these Hellions are coming and going to delay it. There's only three Hellions. Scan going down from the STC does okay. notice what's going on. And there's a Marauder at the front here, so he's going to be completely shut down. He's going to have to run off. In, even with Blue Flame, Marauders take quite a while to die. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, rather difficult to kill a Marauder with Hellions. It takes a lot of shots. Uh -huh. It's kind of similar to trying to take down a building. Um, I don't know, but we see that there's Marauders and Hellions out for Gumiho. He's actually got quite a few Hellions, and even though he doesn't have the blue flame, well, he's just got so many that if he lines them up properly, he can actually take out STC rather easily. There's only three Hellions left here for STC. He's got to be really careful. Look at that. He has swapped over onto a reactor now, so he's producing these blue flame Hellions two at a time. But look into the natural of STC. He's just walking these Marauders up. Yeah, and that... <laughs> That Viking's gonna try and help out, but the, here come the Hellion back up as well. He does have Blue Flame, remember. He's also going back into the natural for Gumio, so both these guys assaulting each other's naturals. And uh, something, there's two Hellions here on very low health that I noticed before with nice control. Gumio did pull them back. Oh my god, the Hellions for the STC do get forced away. At the same time, the Banshee has shown up over here for the STC to save his own naturals. So both these guys deflecting each other quite nicely. But Stim is now yeah. down here, Railcoon, and this is just going to be frustrating for the STC. Run, fat boy, run! Oh, he gets taken down by the Hellion there in the center. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see. He was forced to use that Banshee defensively. When he might have been thinking about trying to send that around to harass the mineral line, so it's not really going to be able to do much. As uh, well, actually, Gumiho doesn't have turrets set up at all. So I was thinking he'd be, you know, kind of. His really engineering barrel just went down but... here now. Yeah, he's making a Viking right now, so STC is just assuming, since he had to use that Banshee defensively, that it's not going to do anything. Yeah. But he might have actually had an opportunity if he sent it straight across the map to try and harass. Mm -hmm. Gumio going for a 4 Hellion drop over here on the left-hand side is actually going to work out quite well, considering it's all the forces. Medivac. Yeah, all the forces here for the STC are moving across the map. I was going to see it with the barracks! Okay, oh. so he does spot it, but does he react? Yes, he does. He's got the Viking and the Banshee on their way over, but the Hellies are right in the mineral line, toasting the STVs. It's kind of blocked by... Oh, they're lining up, Railcoon! Oh! He 
almost got an epic shot off. I actually only able to get five workers there. A lot of them got really low health. Very unfortunate for Gumiho. Mm -hmm. That being said, though, both these guys have now secured their expansions. They're quite even on supply. 37 to 30 in the army supply. 39 to 46. So Gumiho slightly ahead in, in the economy. But like we were saying, he's actually gone, hasn't gone to Bio this time. He does have Stim. He's getting quite a few units, but he's also mixing in a lot of Hellions and Vikings. So, very big deviation from his last build in the last map. Yeah, it's good. the same sort of idea. He's just mixing up the unit composition a little bit more. Uh, probably a little bit frustrated that he wasn't able to keep his Medivacs alive at all last game, even though he wound up winning. But you can see that he has a third command center almost done. And STC is still sitting in his base, just trying to make something happen with these Hellions. But oh, his Hellions are actually going to kill two barracks. That's very frustrating. Oh, one of them anyway. The second one is on 22 oh. health. He's going to go down now. He just killed them both. Like, neither of those got cancelled. That's actually... That's much more than I expected those Hellions to do. That's 300 minerals. But still, <laughs> I mean, he's going to be really far behind in expansions here in a second. Gumu is going to have a hard time securing this third base immediately. With that many blue flame hellions on the field. Mm -hmm. So he's really just going to be forced to use it for mules and some SCVs to, to begin with. And that might be the best to see the opportunity to catch up. But look at this, he's killing the marauders with hellions. Here come the hellions for Gumio to back him up. He's going to force him back. And look at that, an actual marauder's coming out from the right side. Tried to get a flank on him, didn't work out too well. Probably could have caught them if he'd stimmed, but I think he was just being more, more cautious. He has walled off here on the uh, left-hand side of his natural to stop any alien run by. It's a really smart thing to do by Gumio as he is moving forward again. But with the amount of tanks here, they don't have siege just yet. There's not enough yeah. marauders. Oh, marauders actually going home. But there's no way that Gumio can be aggressive right now. No, SCC's tank count is getting up there. And once that siege boat finishes, this is actually going to be a really scary army. He's got a lot of these blue flame hellions in front. Blue flame not really adding a whole lot because Gumiho is very marauder heavy right now. Uh, but they're helping against the few Hellions that he does have out on the field. And he also has these Vikings, the Banshee... Oh, Hellions into the, the natural with the, the STC. There is way too many for the STC to handle at the moment. Only two Hellions and a tank coming down. The SCV is trying to get in the fray as well. At the same time, we do have an engagement Big over Viking here. Fight. And there's enough Vikings to actually clean up for Gumio. But there's so many units on the ground. He doesn't have enough Marauders. There's even that Banshee is going to go down. Sieging up yet again. Go Gumio again? pulling back at the perfect time. And that was a bit he of a... right on top of these tanks. Yeah, there he goes. He's got the Marauders in front. Now the Vikings are taking down all the tanks. I was waiting for Ed Gumiho to do that. He will actually clear this out with the help of those Vikings. Yeah. Him getting that Viking... Oh, that tank really is being perfect. repaired. Uh, it took so long to die. But Gumiho <laughs> looking strong now. He got a lot of SCVs down here before. 16 kills. So we got an extra 10 with that run by. Engaged quite nicely and pulled back right as the tank sieged up, so they did, got out of range. Did damage to the Hellions, pulled out before they took uh, any tank shots. Really smartly done by Gomeo, but there's more reinforcements coming across here for the STC. This could be difficult. Yeah, but this army is not as scary as it used to be. I mean, there's only four tanks. The Hellion count is much, much lower. He doesn't have the air support anymore. And Gomeo, he did lose a lot of Vikings there, dropping on top of the tanks, but trading the Vikings for tanks... Any day. Like, Gumiho will continue to do that any day of the week. Well, That's he'd already defeated all of the air units for the SDC. So even if he loses most of them, oh, well, Hellion's coming around to the right, to the left-hand side. Can't get through that wall. Oh, that big drop got spotted by the watchtower. Mm. He had four medevacs almost completely full of the units. He's going to try and swing around and go for the death blow, but uh, SDC was sitting on the watchtower, so he's forced to turn around. He still has everything up in these medevacs, though, so he's thinking about it. And this watchtower is still occupied, it's just going to fly right back into the watchtower. Oh, you're still watching me, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, looking at the upgrades here for Gumio, is it 01 plus 1 armor on the way? Again, no upgrades for the STC. Oh, here comes STC in the center of the map. He is sieging up, and the Hellions are getting pretty far away from the tanks, but he did have to siege just in case Gumio had started dropping his units on top of him there. He didn't want to uh, be caught with his tanks unsieged. Gumio is going for the three o'clock expansion over here. It's going to be a little bit easier for him to hold with the positioning that they have here in the center of the map. But here we go, SCC sieging up once again, but Gumiho is going to drop right on top of the tanks with a bunch of marauders while he comes in from the front. That's actually very nicely done. It looks like he's going to clear out all the tanks once again. 
Yeah. So... STT, STT thought he was in a really good spot when he saw it. Oh, that's not much bio. Siege up went for it. And then, like, three times the size of the army just drops on his tanks. Not the <laughs> best thing to have happen to you. But it only really was able to do that because he cleaned out all the Vikings earlier in their previous engagement. So yeah. now Gomio taking a 50 supply lead. He's got his third base up and running. There's an SCB over here building a third base for the STC up in the top left. But being 50 supply down at this point in the game and down on upgrades, I think this is going to start swinging heavily into Gumio's favor very shortly. Yeah, SCC's trying to hide that base up there just so that Gumiho maybe will get a little bit overconfident, think that SCC is still on two bases, tries to engage into him and then runs into more units than he's expect. It's a smart move. It really would be one of the only things he can try and do to get himself back in the game here. But it really will rely on Gumiho not scouting this and then attacking in a little bit too aggressively at the same time. Yeah. So basically, it's it's a slim chance, but he's got to try something. Yeah, we do see. Looks like Gumio is going to try and take his next base, but SDC ready for it. Already got stuff here. Yeah, if we look back to STC's base, we see that his army is just mostly tanks right now. This happened again in the previous game. He's been focusing so much on rebuilding the tanks that the Hellions aren't there in front of them. So even if they, if he does get that tank count up again, if there's another big engagement, all of his tanks are just going to melt because they don't have any buffer zone in front of them. He really needs some of those units in front to take the damage against this yeah. huge Marauder but heavy army. here comes a Gumio drop has. into the natural for Gumio, and they have Blue Flame Hellions here. Can all the SCPs are stacked up. They're actually going to get a lot of kills here. Gumio is just ignoring it. He's attacking into the natural yeah. with his huge army. Vikings are flying in, taking out all of the air units of the STC. And then he's going to be able to force him to unseed with the Marauders and these Medivacs. He's flying around just threatening it. But he didn't actually drop them. The Hellions are still around in his natural. He will finally clear those out once another round of units pop out of his barracks. But I thought he was going to drop the Marauders in there on top of the tanks. No, he's actually going straight into the main. See if he can get SCC to unseed. And the moment he does, the rest of his army is just going to run in the front. And if SCC doesn't unseed, well, he's going to lose his main base. So he's got him between a, a rock and a hard place right now. Yeah, he's actually doing a nice job of splitting up the SCC's forces here. Uh, he's pulled quite a few into the main. He's just going to lift, like... Like lift all those Vikings and get out of there if he wants to. There is two Vikings out now, but the, those Hellions are finally cleaned up in the natural of, of Gumio's. But there's just so much stuff here, and he's even going to clean up the Gumeo's units that were sent back it. to save his base. Yeah, I, Gumio is going to be able to attack in on the natural here in a second. Here he comes, running in with all the Marauders and Marines, stimming in, focusing down all the tanks. You can see they go down very, very quickly, and there's the instant GG from SDC. Yeah. So, uh, Gumio taking down the STC 2-0 in the first round of the wow. FX Open Invitational Series. Not expected that. I expected a very long, drawn-out, close match between these guys. Uh, going 2-1 in favor of Gumio in the end. I think that was my prediction earlier. Uh, if you uh, guys are wondering, in the TL thread, we do have predictions and recaps for all of these games going up pretty much in real time. And, of course, if you want to support the tournament, we do have a $5 per month subscription. Not only do you get no ads, but you also go into the chance to win Razor gear, signed FX Open shirts, and all those, those nice things. We will be right back with our next set. Stay with us.
Here we go, welcome back everyone. We're going to have our next match up here today. It is going to be Slayer's Puzzle up against uh, Pung Pung Prime. I am Unstable, joined here by Rail King yet again for this today's action. Of course, we do have uh, Pung Pung Stabonning up here at the top right as our Blue Zerg. And then Slayer's Puzzle down here at the bottom left as our Red Protoss. You may notice my voice has probably changed a little bit. We had to swap microphones for some reason. The other one was being a little funky. But, yeah, we will go on, won't we, Rail King? Yeah. Dan's just sounding more usual, more normal. He had a other microphone that was hiding his crazy voice. And now he's gonna, <laughs> wasn't able to set this one up properly, so you're hearing more of what Dan actually sounds like. No. Uh, but yeah, we got a PVZ. Daybreak. Pretty excited. I love watching PVZ. Yeah, this map I, I really think is one of the more staple maps in the, in the map pool that we have and also in the GSL these days. Very dynamic. Uh, can be played either way. The middle of the map rocks haven't really been used early game these days. Sometimes you see proxies hidden in the right next to the watchtowers, as we saw Finn do. Sometimes you see very intricate plays between both these be, these players as well. Like they're very innovative players, and I think we'll see something exactly like that. Of course, we have spawning pool going down, given it that it is a two-player map here on day rig, very standard open like this. And that will give Puzzle a chance to go for his Nexus a little bit earlier than he wants to. If he, But of course he has gone for that Forge first. He might actually be planning to do some aggressive cannoning. Which is uh, something that happens every now and then if the Zerg tries to fast expand anyway. Yeah, he's just uh, going for the Forge because it's a bit of a saver option. Oh, oh you smart case. little thing. Bong Pong huh. actually moved his drone. This is something I do actually when I get a chance to play on ladder is I hide the drone to the right, and as soon as the probe comes into the base, you just run around and get your hatchery down. Love it. I remember Machine used to do that a whole bunch back in the beta, and everybody was like, oh my god! Mm. And then, like, he got, did that several times in a high profile, and then everybody would go check for his drone, and it didn't work. <laughs> so it's one of those little tricks that you can only do every once in a while, because if you start doing it every game, then they're going to expect it and still block it. Yeah, and with this Pong Pong bringing trick. his Overlord just in case a, a pylon goes down as well. Puzzle's realized this, so I don't think he's going to try it at this point. Of course, the lings are on the way, the spawning pool did go down first, and oh no, he's going to sneak his probe back into the main. Regardless, okay then. And uh, Pong Pong <laughs> needs to be careful with this Overlord, because if he, okay, he has had it rallied back out as well, wants to come in, check if the timing on this Nexus and get out before that cannon finishes. There is no bigger face palm moment in a Zerg's life than having your Overlord taken out by the first cannon of a Forge experiment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but you should feel horrible if that ever happens to you. <clears throat> it has happened to everybody. Anybody who says otherwise is just lying. <laughs> <laughs> so we see that the hatchery is just about to finish up for Pong Pong down here at the natural. He still hasn't actually done any extractors yet. Mm. He's uh, delaying his gas quite a bit. He's droning up really, really hard. He only made those first two Zerglings. So he's actually trying to start really heavy into the economic play. You see that he's got his third hatchery out already as well. And this is a situation where a lot of players, um, this is the exact situation where protest players, when they get the two gates and Chrono Boost out Zealots, is designed to punish. Yeah. But it seems like Puzzle is just playing a little bit more normally, so Pong Pong is just taking a really nice economic edge in the early game. Even if we do have that two gate Zealot pressure, uh, you can still punish, well, you can still defend without Ling Speed. It's just if with the nice control, you do lose a few more than you'd like to. But either way, that's not what's happening like at the moment, like you were saying. And the puzzle is looking ready to gear up to see what kind of opening we're going to see from him. Whether it's going to be whoa. Bill has no gas. Yeah. That's... Like he's actually pushing this pretty far. He's actually making a lot of zerglings right now, mm -hmm. just because at this point he is going to be expecting some zealots to be coming in. Well, he did two see the two coming out with his, his ling that got taken out at the front of the, the ramp, so he's being, just being now a he's safe. Now he's finally making extractors. And this is actually a cool trick. He's got one going in the main and one going in the natural, yep. so that if the zealot comes in, he'll see... he'll get the wrong idea of how many extractors are. Or if an observer flies in, he'll get the wrong idea of how many extractors there are. It's just trying to mess with the, any potential scouting here. And here come the zealots he into the natural, and look at that, Puzzle's realizing he has to run away, he's trying to go- OH! Nice Duke with one of those zealots. He's gonna get one of them pretty far away, and the second one is gonna take out quite a few. But unfortunately, still not. He's just happen. straight up running away instead of actually trying to hit them while he runs, because that, that zealot's dead. Mm. And he didn't even take a single swipe at them. That's right, but we do it's... have a double Stargate follow-up behind this. Ten drones in production for Pung Pung. And it did allow, like, that no gas did allow him to get a few more drones out. He could 
He's got extra. He's got a queen at his third base now to be safe from this. He hasn't actually gone for an Evo Chamber or any kind of tech after this. We'll probably see him throw down both the Evo and a Roach Warren at the same time. Simply because he's going to this, this lair right now. Yeah. And uh, see, there's the Roach Warren because he sometimes can be punished very heavily. And the Evo Chamber. Alright. <coughs> he used quite to heavily between between bases though with uh, Creep. And he hasn't actually made an extra queen to do that just yet. Which is uh, curious because of the fact that he delayed his gas, usually it gives you an extra mineral income for a long time, and players will usually use that to get some extra queens out. Yeah. But Pong Pong has actually just thrown all of that into drones. He's still droning even while he goes through this. He's almost up to 60 drones, and we're six minutes in. Yeah. It's actually a huge amount of drones right now. And he's starting to make some spine crawlers, so we're going to be some spore crawlers following that up. But this is very greedy play by Pong Pong, and if he can defend it without taking too much, it's going to pay off really nicely in the mid game for him. Of course, he does know that the Stargate are in play here at the moment. Spore Crawler is going down. And plus one range attacks on his Evo Chamber. Uh, still continuing to drone very heavily. He's at 58 now, soon to be at over 60, like you were saying. And because he's seen that Stargate play, he doesn't really have to make that many links. He can just sit here with his Queens. He's got another one on the way, of course. It is coming out the natural. And he's got yeah. Spore Crawlers down at his third. So this is really going to be shut down quite hard because... Puzzle was trying to take out the Overlord at the back of the natural here and gave it away. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things you do with this is that, you know, it's not uncommon for them to do a single Stargate and then take out the Overlords, but he wasn't. Uh, the, the problem is that since Pong Pong was playing so greedily, he did invest a lot in the anti-air. So what might happen usually is that they see a single Phoenix, they're like, oh, it's one Stargate, it's fine. They try and skimp on the air defense, then oh my god, it's two, what the hell just happened? But, but here comes Pong Pong Puzzle. was playing defensively, he's just fully prepared for this. He's gonna lift up that queen and take it out, but here comes the rest of the queens, and there's sport crawlers everywhere as well. Well, he's got a good angle on that extractor, try and keep the gas count for Pong Pong low. Uh, there are, of course, nine hydras in production, there's hydra range, and the roach speed, so... We'll probably see a counter-attack to this, with a lot of roaches, a lot of hydras. As you can see, he's just funneled into this one spot. He doesn't want it to really move forward. He's still losing drones, though. Oh, he's going to lose another extractor. You need to cancel that, buddy. <laughs> nope. <laughs> and here we go. The phoenix is coming forward. Ran right into those hydras. And it looks like Puzzle is going to back off. During all of this, of course, he has got his robotics facility. Robotics bay on the way as well. There's still some links in the middle of the map here for Pong Pong. So we will be able to see what more stuff comes across. Yeah, but if you look at uh, Puzzle, he really doesn't have any ground units up to this point. He's only no. just now finishing up his extra gateways. People start warping those in. He's going to need to shift over to get more uh, units on the ground if he's going to be getting those Colossus out. You see, Phoenix is coming in, picking out some queens that are here in between bases, trying to spread some creep. But the Hydra's coming in to chase those away. The Void Ray did go down, so it's just the... Oh no, the Void Ray no, got the void away. Void Ray got away. He never actually went in with those Phoenixes. Man, here come the roaches I didn't see the now. void ray and I got there right as something died, so I thought that was the void ray. <laughs> Pung Pung is up 20 supply in the work account, both even on work, um, sorry, on army supply, even on work is 73 to 73. And this is actually going to work out well here for Pung Pung because he's going to have the army, he can start throwing his units at Puzzle now. Puzzle trying to take a third base, this is going to be very vulnerable to this force here from Pung Pung is coming, a, is coming through. Roaches have speed now, of course, plus two is halfway done. The downside to this for Pung Pung is he doesn't have anything to deal with these Colossus that are coming out. Halfway through for Extended Thermal Lands, and they are going to shred through this army quite nicely. And it really comes down to Puzzle needs more gateway units right now. Yeah, um, Pong Pong needs a few more roaches as well, but uh, Puzzle's really short on sentries in particular, which could be an